What's up, friends? It's your boy, David. Got another easy scatter terrain build for you today. Prefab concrete walls. These are great for using with modern or sci-fi, and a lot of the same principles could be scaled up or down, depending on your game of choice. But enough talk, let's get to it. The base I chose to use for these was mini Jenga blocks from the dollar store. These are quite useful for a number of tabletop projects, actually. I use them here to give me the basic shape I wanted without needing to do any cutting, but you could easily use layered cardboard or chipboard here as well. Any kind of flat, porous surface should be fine. If you're using the blocks like I am, glue a few pieces together into your shape of choice. I picked three pieces wide and another two end pieces rotated 90 degrees. Basic PVA glue or wood glue is fine here. Just run a small bead over the side, spread it out with your finger, and stick them together on a flat surface to dry. Glue the wall sections onto your base of choice now too. I used my normal jumbo popsicle sticks, but instead of rounding the corners like normal, I cut them flush with the walls. This means that the walls can butt together with less of a gap in between them. After you give that a chance to dry, smear some spackling on all the sides. You can use whatever tool you're comfortable with here. For the most part, I personally worked with a popsicle stick. Work in sections here though, so you don't end up holding the walls by some wet spackling. I did the larger sides first and then went back through and did the tops and end supports afterwards. Once that step has had time to dry, which is probably about 30 minutes depending on the brand, apply a layer of watered down PVA glue or black magic base coat on everything. You can also choose to spray prime at this stage and then move on to your base colors. A good starting point here is a simple medium gray. After one or two coats over everything, you can choose to add in some variety with a few other colors too. I sponged and stippled on a few different medium browns. Follow that up with a dry brush of a light gray to start bringing out some more of the texture, and then we move on to detailing. I decided to kick it old school and add in some simple graffiti from Rogue Trader. I found a few images to reference, but not many in the original book. Freehand your graffiti on with some Sharpies. I also did a mark of Nurgle here, which wound up being my personal favorite. To make the graffiti look old and weathered, do a coat of spray sealer. This makes the Sharpie ink run, and if you hold it about 3-6 to six inches from the graffiti, you can get a pretty nifty weathering effect. After the optional graffiti, it's time to dirty up the walls with a few washes. You could use one here and call it a day, but I wanted to play around with a few different effects, so I ended up using two. Messily streak down the sides with a brush, and cover the top with a coat as well. Another optional step at this point is to use technical style paints. I used a few GW and Army Painter effects I have on hand to get the walls really grimy. I also made sure to goop on some ooze for Pop and Nurgle here. Basing is pretty simple as well. Hit the edges of the base with a black or dark brown paint and glue your flocking mix of choice on. I defaulted to super glue with a mix of coffee grounds and tea leaves for mine. Then finish off the base by adding dry pigments or seasoning to taste. To finish bringing the piece together, I like to do a very light dry brush over dirty areas. A subtle touch with your medium gray, followed by an even gentler dry brush of a light gray. I find this to be a great way to bring the most extreme colors back down and tie everything together. This also brings out the details again across the whole piece. And that's it for this one, folks. The text graffiti I copied across from Rogue Trader didn't turn out the best, but the Mushroom Cloud and the Mark of Nurgle I'm a big fan of. And given that the graffiti takes about five minutes with the spray sealer weathering effect, it's not like it's a huge waste of time, even if it doesn't turn out. But what do you think? Do you have any fun graffiti you want to try this way? And how about the spackling and Mod Podge for texture? I feel like that could lend itself really well to zone mortalis walls or even dungeon tiles. Let me know down in the comments. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to stay safe, sane, and crafty out there. And I'll see you in the next build.